All right, mate. How's it going? In today's video, chapter seven of Arthur's Rise of the Lich King. Things are going to get sexy. So let's get. The few months Arthur spent in Dalaran were pretty good. Surprisingly, the prince actually did learn some things that would be useful when he becomes king. Plus, he'd had plenty of opportunities to just chill out and have fun. And there was Jaina as well, which was a bonus. He'd not planned on kissing her after their snow fight. It just sort of happened. And afterwards, they both decided it would probably be best to keep this new relationship on the down low. Which added a bit of extra spiciness, to be honest. Sneaking around, being all secretive and stuff. Arthas had even memorised Jaina's schedule, so he could accidentally on purpose bump into her every now and then, and be all like, Oh, Jaina, fancy seeing you here. And Arthas loved every bloody risky daring minute of it. In fact, that was what he was doing right now, standing in a hallway, pretending to look at books. He knew Jaina was going to be walking through this hallway any minute now, and soon enough, she did. So he jumped out, grabbed her, and pulled her into the shadows. Hello, my lady. Hello, my prince. Jaina, why are you... Aww. Who the bloody hell was that? The two of them sprang apart quickly to see who this nosy intruder was, and Jaina's face went bright red as she realised it was Kalthas. The elven prince's face was seemingly composed, but you could see anger burning in his eyes. He dropped a book as he left. I followed you to return it. That's very kind of you, Kale. Thanks. Well, this was awkward. For a second, it looked like Kale was going to punch Arthas, but the Prince of Lordaeron didn't back down, so both of them were just sort of staring at each other. Ashamed of her, are you, Arthas? Is she only worth your time and attention if no one knows about her? You what, mate? I'm simply protecting her reputation by... Protecting? If you cared about her, you'd court her openly. Proudly. Any man would. Kelthas then looked at Jaina and the anger in his face faded. Now he just looks sad. I'll leave you to fondle each other's balls or whatever you're doing. And don't worry, I won't tell anyone. As Kel started to leave, he let out one final hiss of anger, like a weirdo, to make sure everyone knew he was not pleased. And then he was gone. Who the hell even does that? I'm sorry, Arthas. I probably should have told you. Told me what? Wait, are you and he... What? No. But I think he wanted to. He's a good man. And a prince. But he's not... Not what? Arthas could feel the jealousy growing inside him. Kalthas was many things that he wasn't. Older, powerful, sophisticated. That douche was just about damn near perfect. He's not you. And the jealousy was gone. That made Arthas feel better immediately. Who cared what some stick-up-the-arse prince thought anyway? The rest of the year unfolded without any major events. Citizens were becoming increasingly angry about the cost of the internment camps, but both Terranus and Arthas had expected as much. And Arthas had continued his training with Uther. Not just in arms, but in prayer and meditation as well. We must be able to cut down our enemies, but we must also be able to heal our friends. And ourselves, bruh. The problem with learning how to heal and stuff was that it always reminded Arthas of his failure to save Invincible. Especially when winter came, with all the snow and stuff outside. But eventually, winter passed, and spring came. And with it, the major celebration known as Noble Garden. Which is kind of like Easter, with eggs and stuff. Arthas was being sent to public functions more and more recently, and there were a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, Uther and the King were getting old, and just couldn't be bothered to travel about as much anymore. But also, although there had still not been any kind of public announcement about the relationship, both Arthas and Jaina's parents had discussed the matter, and it seemed like they were all okay with the courtship, because Jaina was being sent to quite a lot of public functions as well. So, Arthas and Jaina were currently publicly celebrating Noble Garden together, painting eggs. It was great. Come to the Midsummer Fire Festival. I can't. Summer's a busy time at Dalaran. All right, I'll come visit you for Midsummer, and you can come here for Hallow's End. Jeez, man, you're relentless. Okay. I'll try. Yeah, you'll be here. And she was. It was believed at Hallow's End that the barrier between the living and the dead was thin. That living peeps could commune with dead peeps. And it was traditional for a straw effigy to be erected outside the palace, which would then be set on fire. Peasants could then approach the fiery effigy, toss in a branch, and metaphorically burn away anything they didn't wish to carry with them. And I would make a joke about the Headless Horseman, but he didn't actually exist yet in terms of law, so that wouldn't make any sense. So I'll just say... Some paladin named Sir Thomas Thompson walked past and was all like, Hello then, eh? What a load of old shit. And to be honest, Arthas felt like it was a load of old shit. Tossing a branch into a fire wasn't going to solve anyone's problems, and contacting the dead was impossible, as far as he was concerned. But it had brought Jaina back to Lordaeron, so who cares? Arthas had a little surprise in mind for her this evening. As the sun began to set and the crowds gathered to watch the lighting of the effigy, Arthas walked out from the palace. Cheers erupted, so he paused and waved and then turned and extended his hand to Jaina. She was a little bit surprised. They were in public and stuff. But she then took his hand, so the crowd started to cheer her name, as well as Arthas's. The two of them then walked down the path towards the giant wicker man, and as they reached it, Arthas held up a hand for silence. My countrymen, 
I join you in celebration of this most revered of nights, the night when we remember those no longer with us and cast aside the things that hold us back. We burn the wicker man as a symbol of the year that is passing, and I am pleased to be able to offer the distinct honour of lighting this year's effigy to Lady Jaina Proudmore. Jaina's eyes widened in shock as Arthur's continued. She is the daughter of war hero Admiral Dalen Proudmore and a powerful mage in her own right. As Magi amasses of fire, I think it's only right that she light our wicker man this evening. Do you agree? The assembled masses roared with delight, as Arthas knew they would. He then bowed towards Jaina and whispered, Give him a show, Babs. He'll love it. So she did. Long gone were the days where Jaina had little control over fire and would burn people's eyebrows off. The effigy went up quicker than it had ever done so before. Spectacular. Well, you said to give him a show. Yeah, but that was too good a show. They'll want you to light it every year now. Would that be a problem? No. No, it wouldn't be a problem at all. The two then joined in with the celebrations and festivities, dancing and stuff. The guards weren't exactly big fans of them mixing with the common folk, but they didn't give a shit. They were having a whale of a time. And after sneaking away from the guards and grabbing some snacks from the castle kitchens, they head up to one of the many castle bedrooms. And as they entered, Arthas was surprised to see that it was Jaina that made the first move to get down to some sexy business time. She moved towards his bed whilst leading him by the hand. Are we ready for this? I am if you are. And we're leaving it there! Sorry, I couldn't resist that. Probably be asked to take this video down now, because it's porn or something. For anyone that's really finding these romantic parts uncomfortable, don't worry, it's nearly over. And we'll be getting into the Warcraft 3 stuff fairly soon. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying this book. Also, there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and 